The strawweight division is in a little bit of a flux situation right now with the most current champion, Verna Jandarova, going over to the UFC. That is a vacant title. And what better way to determine who should be the strawweight champion than to put all the contenders in a line, have them fight in a tournament, and see who comes out on top. The hard thing about tournaments, when they're separated by a month, a week, any amount of time, things go wrong. People get hurt in camp, and so the guy that wins in the first round can't go to the second. The woman who's really dominating, oh, she has an injury, can't go on. One night eliminates all that. Everything happens all at one time. They're right there. So you win, you move on. There's nothing in between. There's no problems that could get in the way of the best fighting the best. It's all decided at one time, so there aren't any excuses. That's what's great about it. Fans have already come to expect a certain level of action from Invicta fighters, but add in a one-night tournament style format, add in the fact that these women are not only just fighting to win the tournament, they are fighting for the Invicta FC strawweight belt, and I can assure you, you're gonna see a whole new level of action and possibly some career-defining performances. Danielle Dynamite Taylor is exactly that. She is explosive. When you watch her strike, her speed is absolutely incredible. And she too has some phenomenal credentials coming into this tournament. Not only is she a two-time King of the Cage strawweight champion, but she had a two-year run in the UFC. To compete at that level, to beat the likes of Jessica Penne and Seo Hee Ham, she knows she can compete at the top of the strawweight division, and she's gonna know coming into this tournament that she has what it takes to get it done. Danielle Taylor might be the biggest threat in terms of punching power in this entire tournament, but not only that, she sees herself one day being a two division Invicta FC champion, and she's laser focused on getting the first part of that equation done. Well, for this tournament, my preparation is, uh, it's just high intensity because the, I guess the rules of the tournament is the first two fights are five minutes, and that's it. So I really have to put on a show. There's no, okay, there's gonna be a second, a third round, no, one round and that's it. So everything that I've been doing has just been high. Like, it's just been go, 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 boom. And I just feel like just doing this tournament just takes me back to uh, the DBZ days, Dragon Ball Z, and uh, they had tournaments, you know? And this is my saga, you know? So I'm, t I'm planning on winning this. That's the main goal with Invicta, I want to take over. And just knowing that this tournament gave me the opportunity to have that belt, if I win, I'll be the strawweight champion where I feel like I deserve. I deserve to have that belt. I'm training my, my butt off for this. And I'm really excited, like, I'm night and day. It doesn't matter, three, four, five sessions a day, I'll do whatever it takes to win that belt. Of the three fighters fighting in this tournament with UFC experience, Juliana Lima has by and large the best resume. She has gone three rounds with Joanna Jonjenczyk and she holds a win over Nina Ansaroff, who's currently ranked number four in the UFC's strawweight division. At 5'5", she is very tall for the division and really puts that length to use with her Muay Thai striking game, but she also has a very underrated wrestling game. It makes her very comfortable anywhere the fight goes. She's comfortable on the canvas. She's comfortable against the cage. She can get it done anywhere. 2018, I didn't fight. I was like maybe thinking retired. Uh, I think every fighter, they pass through these kind of situations, you know? But, you know, when you love what you do, you always have that feeling like, I need to step back in the octagon again. And because it's the only thing I know, do, and the only thing I love to do, so I train every day and I teach um, 24 hours at the gym. Not 24 hours, but almost my time I'm at the gym and it's the place I love to stay, it's what I love to do is teach and fight. I hope I can show on this tournament everything I, I know, you know? Because sometimes you go to a fight and maybe your psychology is not 100% 
So uh, everything you know is nothing because your psychology is not good. But I'm feeling great. I'm feeling sharp. I'm feeling 100% like amazing. <laughs> For sure I will live there with my belt. <laughs> Iceland's Suna David's daughter uh, is coming into this tournament with the least amount of experience out of anyone, but she's also the only one who has never lost. She is a combined 7-0 and in her amateur and pro career. She's rattled off three wins inside of the Invicta FC cage, and you got to believe that that's going to give her a ton of confidence coming into May 3rd. The last time we saw Suna in the Invicta FC cage was almost two years ago. Good luck studying her tape. I mean, these women are gonna have a very tough task figuring out what Suna David's daughter brings to the table. What we do know is she puts on a relentless pace. She will grind you out against the fence, she'll get the takedown, and when she's in top position, her ground and pound is nasty. This opportunity to fight this one night tournament, it gives me the chance to make up for a lot of time that I've been away. Uh, it's going to be about 20 months, I've been counting the days, for, for me to be away and I've been waiting and I've, I planned on getting in in the end of last year and didn't work out and now I have the chance to come back and all in one night I get to make up for a long time away and, and I'll be able to fight a few fights. Or, and have a few few opponents all in one night and uh, I'm really excited about it. I couldn't wish for a better way to come back. I've, I've been, I'm full of energy. I was supposed to take this time and be injured and go through all those emotions and ups and downs and figure out who I am and why I do this and, and it has made me more durable, more stronger more hungry than ever and I'm so ready for this tournament I'm, and I'm ready to take that belt because I have known for so long it belongs to me so it's just perfect I'm happy. Yeah. Of all the fighters in this tournament, Kylan Curran might be the dark horse. She is a perfect example of a fighter who is far more dangerous fighter than her record would lead you to believe. She has seven fights in the UFC, and coming from Hawaii, you know what that means, she is Hawaiian tough. The woman has faced all levels of adversity inside the cage, and she has come through them all, and that is the type of mindset that is gonna be a huge asset in a one-night tournament like this. Kylan Curran can strike, she can grapple, and she's got a high school wrestling background to back all of that up. And most importantly, she has a never say die attitude that will be a huge asset in a tournament like this. She hasn't fought in almost a year and a half, so it is quite possible we'll see a completely new evolution of Kylan Curran come May 3rd. I just wake up and live each day as it comes, you know? Um, it is tough, you know, it's grindy, the sport of you're always in the gym, you're always training, you're always trying to be better than the person that you were yesterday. With the sport of MMA, I feel like you're constantly learning. There's always things to be learned. So I feel just motivated by that, you know, that, that simple fact is that I can always grow. When I come into the gym, there's something I can learn that, that day, you know, so that's what motivates me. and. I think that right now I'm in like such a special place in my career just because I've been through so much as far as just being so close to victory but then not quite getting there so I feel like I still have something to prove to myself um, 
that I know I'm blessed with all these gifts and talents and I wouldn't want it to go to waste by just giving up. So I think that's, that, that's what motivates me and keeps me going. I think I have more, I have experience going into this fight. I think that's what separates me is that I've been through ups and like a lot of downs. Um, for me personally, I don't really know what the other fighters like have gone through in their life, but I know what I've gone through and it's just, I just want to perform and do the best that I could do and come out on top. They say nature abhors a vacuum. MMA abhors a vacuum. It hates it when there's no champion. When there's no number one, it's like a feeding frenzy. Everybody wants to get to the top. Everybody wants that spot. It's wide open. So what that means is every talented fighter at 115 pounds in Invicta is starving. They all want the belt. They all want to be number one, and this is their opportunity to get that. You're not waiting behind the champion. You can be the champion. I feel like everything is happening the way it's supposed to happen. All this time away and uh, the way that this is all coming together, this tournament, all those fights in one night. And I've seen that belt in front of me for so long. So I, I know that this is the way it was supposed to be. It was meant to be like this. I'm telling you, everybody's not going to want to close their eyes. There's going to be fists flying, and it's just going to be an exciting matchup. I'm the best. I already know I'm the best. I train hard as hell. I feel like I train harder than anybody out there, and this is my way of showing it. Me uh, getting that belt at the end of the day, smiling with my team in my back, like, uh, I'm excited. I want that belt, and I know everybody's going to see I deserve it. They're going to see how much I put out, and I'm going to just take these chicks out one by one. I feel like I've proven that I'm a tough brat. I feel like I've proven that I'm a, an adequate, even capable opponent. I wouldn't be in this tournament, even though I've come off two losses, right? People recognize that I'm legitimate. So I don't feel like I have to prove anything. I just have to go do work. I'm gonna have my hand raised three times. Com certeza vai ser a maior experiência, a experiência mais incrível da minha vida. E eu quero. Não é novidade para ninguém que eu sempre busco nocaute, mas eu quero me testar. Eu quero surpreender e eu tenho certeza que eu estou bem preparada para surpreender em qualquer área. E eu espero ser a campeã do, do GP dia 3 de maio, do Phoenix Racing Tournament. Esse GP já é meu. I don't think I need to prove anything, uh, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm there to go in and just do what I do. Um, I'm not there to prove, prove a point to anybody. Um, I'm, I think, you know, I'm the queen of the jungle and everybody's going to know that come May 3rd. My, my hand will be raised in the first fight, the second fight, and the finale. So, not so much, not going to prove anything, but just to, you know, showcase my skills and, you know, let everything else present itself. Everybody's tough, you know. If they wasn't tough, they weren't there, right? And... This is great because I like to fight against tough people. Uh, all my career, I fought against tough fighters. So it's gonna be amazing. I, I, will, I, I will put a show there. The belt's gonna be mine for sure. But the tournament winner of champion belt is the winner of the belt. It's so easy to to doubt yourself just because of you know coming up short or feeling like you had that fight but you didn't get the win. I don't know. I think I'm just proving to myself right now and like and really asking, digging deep and asking myself, like, is this where you want, this is, is this what you want to do? Is this where you want to be? So I think that this fight will show my, myself my, my true feelings and my true colors about, 
about MMA. It's like, do you want to be here? If you do, prove it. If you don't, it'll show. I've been in MMA 20 years. I've never seen anything like this. A one night tournament where everything hinges on one round. Everything hinges on how much you can throw at your opponent in five minutes. Where there's no future. There's no looking forward. It's everything is right now. The immediacy and the excitement is gonna be in every single round because every minute's important. Ultimately, mixed martial arts is about testing yourself testing your skills, your preparation, and most of all, your mental fortitude. Ideally, a champion should be the best and highest embodiment of all of those factors. And in an age where the sport is at times struggling with the ambiguity, the status of certain champions and politics and rankings, the purity that the Phoenix Rising Tournament Series brings to this level of mixed martial arts competition is truly groundbreaking. Regardless of their journey to this point, eight women will begin the night on equal footing, each looking to prove that they have the skills and the mindset, what it takes to become victorious. And if they do, they will emerge as the Invicta FC strawweight champion.